Hi, I'm Danny, and yes, I am back after all these months. It, it truly hasn't been that long for you guys. I think it's been about two months for, since you saw a video from me, but for me, it's probably been more around three or four months because I've pre-filmed some of my tags. Some, not all. And so, um, I'm here with my four-month wrap-up. This is, will consist of October, November, December, and January. Since this is now the end of January, I figure I might as well throw it on in instead of making a whole another video. But anyway, I've been gone. I haven't been gone because of my reasons, really. First, my camera just suddenly just went blip, went off. I, I was literally in the middle of filming. I'm like, okay, what the heck? Tried to turn it on, even changed the battery, nothing worked. So I ended up sending it in to get fixed. Whatever the problem was, they obviously fixed it because the camera's back. Then my computer went blip, and I have no idea why again. So sent it in, and it's a good thing I did because that very same night I dropped it and the screen cracked. So whatever the problem was inside, that wouldn't let it come on, and the screen, they fixed both. So I am now back editing videos and filming. But uh, you probably won't see too many wrap-ups and tags and stuff from me like normal because I am not working two jobs, which means I have like less than half the time I used to to read. Like, the only time I would probably be reading is on lunch breaks and weekends. Anyway, let's get into these books and Lego. Okay, so the first books I read at the beginning of October... Sorry, I was a little far away. So this book series consists of... Halfway to the Grave, One Foot in the Grave, At Grave's End, Destined for an Early Grave, This Side of the Grave, One Grave at a Time, and then the prequel to the series, The Reckoning. So those books consist of the Night Hunter series, and the Night Hunter series follows a fiery redhead named Cat, who since 16 has been hunting vampires to try and track down her father, who is a vampire, who raped her mother, and five months later Cat was born. So once she turned 16, her mother told her everything, and after a bad night, Kat goes to a bar and ends up killing a vampire, and she's been doing it ever since, and she ends up running into a vampire named Bones on one of her jobs, and she ends up teaming up with him, and I absolutely love this series. I, once I read this book, I went immediately back to the library and picked up the rest of the series, and once I finished them, I bought them. This is actually a book I bought myself for Christmas. So the first book is Halfway to the Grave. I gave that one a three star rating. The next book is One Foot in the Grave. I gave that also a three star rating. The next one was One Grave at a Time. I also gave that a three star rating. Destined for an Early Grave, book four, I gave a three star rating. This Side of the Grave, book five, I gave a four star rating. One Grave at a Time, I also gave a four star rating. And that consists of the Night Huntress series. Now for the novellas. Prequel, The Reckoning, this pretty much shows you what led Bones to meeting Cat in that bar that they meet in in the first book. I also gave this one a three star rating. Then Happily Never After, this is also a novella. This is about two, book 2.5. This takes place between book 2 and 3. I actually think this one is mislabeled. It should actually be 1.5 because if this is the one I'm thinking of, this should take place between book 1 and 2. So not 2.5, it's more like 1.5. But anyway, uh, this also has Bones very briefly in it, but it actually follows another vampire that Bones knows. He, um, a woman Bones knew from his past asked him for his help with her granddaughter, and Bones ends up sending one of his, not henchmen, but kind of a friend, but he's also under Bones' line, and if you read the series, you'll understand what that means. And so he sends him there, and it's him helping her and them getting to know each other and it's very cute and I gave this one I gave this one a four star rating next is the devil to play this is book 3.5 although I can't quite remember what happens in this one so I can't say if that one's correct or not okay after the reading the summary I do remember this one now this one doesn't follow bones or cat or anyone they know this one actually follows someone who's introduced in the series named man carries and he's in this very he's in this briefly too um, a vampire he made, she's kind of a shut-in, and she finally is, fi she meets this guy who is possessed by a demon. He blacks out, and suddenly he wakes up, and he's surrounded by dead bodies and body parts, and, or he's covered in blood, but either way, the demon ends up killing somebody or doing something horrible 
So she finds him, she calls him and carries, and they try and get the demon out of him. This one was okay. I gave this one, I think, a 2.5 or a 3 star rating. I can't quite remember. Next, I read these two spinoffs from the Night Hunter series, and that is A Drop of Crimson and Eternal Kiss of Darkness. A Drop of Crimson follows two characters named Denise and Spade, or Charles, depending on what you call him. Vampires in this series have more than one name. Sometimes they have 20 names, depending on which one you know them by and call them by. depends on your relationship with them. But anyway, so Denise and Spade, um, Denise gets into a bit of trouble and after something very traumatic that happens to her in the Night Hunter series, she's kind of avoiding her best friend Kat and anything to do with the vampire or supernatural world. But she gets into a spot of trouble and instead of calling Kat, she calls, she calls Spade or Charles. We're just going to call him Spade though. And through a whole bunch of twists and turn events, she ends up being haunted by this demon to find this family member of hers that she'd never even heard of who lived like a hundred years, two hundred years ago, and who made a deal with this demon and somehow reneged on it. So he needs Denise to help him to find this person because this person is somehow surrounded by vampires and the demon can't find her. So he ends up marking Denise, which I'm still a teeny bit confused on what quite that is. I do know that she has part of the demon in her so she can access some of his powers and he can find her anywhere, anytime he wants. And so that it's pretty much just De Denise's and Spade's story, them falling in love, trying to find this family member of hers, and a whole bunch of other twists and turns and crazy stuff. But I did like it. I gave this one a 3.5 rating. Next is Eternal Breath of Darkness. This follows Men Carries, that character I was telling you about that was in the 900 series and in the novella. Um, he... At some point in the series, he loses his visions. He has a, a, a power to see into the future. Very brief glimpses, but enough for him to kind of get an idea of what he's trying to be told. Um, and that's in the series, he lost his visions, and so he's just constantly seeing darkness. So he th he believes that he's supposed to die. So he sets it up to where he can be killed and his people will be fine and nobody will kind of be responsible for it, but he ends up being saved by this um, private detective, I, I want to say. She, she's kind of a private photographer, I think is more the word. And she ends up saving him, and through twists and turns, she ends up being turned into a vampire, and it just, the story just keeps going from there. All these twists and turns, McCarries is being blamed for a murder and a video that got leaked on YouTube of someone being turned into a vampire. So, yeah. But it was very, very good. I gave this one a four star rating. Next was Dorothy Must Die by Daniel Page. This is basically a what would happen if Dorothy had found a way back to Oz and turned evil. The revolutionary, the revolutionary order of the wicked brings another girl from Kansas to stop Dorothy and I did not finish this one. I like, ooh, my bookmark is still in here. I got to page three, no, one second. 394, so maybe about 100 pages before the story was done. Less than 100 pages before the story was done and I just could not do it. It seemed what... I know that Killing Dorothy has to take over the entire series because I think there are four books in this series, but it just took too long to get to everything and I'm honestly surprised I made it this far and I did a whole lot of skimming at that. Since I didn't finish it, I never actually gave it a rating. Uh, I'm going to give this one 2.7. Next is Seeds Volume 1. This is a another uh, this is a retelling of Hades and Persephone. I've been on kind of a kick with those lately. Um so anyway, I really did like this one. I gave this one. I gave this a four star rating and I have already ordered the second book. This one goes from about this one actually starts before Persephone's even born. Maybe about a year or so before Persephone's born and stops when she's already in the underworld. Her mother knows she's missing and she's just starting to explore the underworld. That's pretty much where this stops. It was pretty good. Uh, oh, by, by the way, this is this is Seeds by M.M. M. Kin. And it's self-published, so if you 
go to a local bookstore, you may not find it. Plus, it's I think it's a few years old. 2013, yeah, so you may not find it in the bookstore if you just stop by. You'll probably have to order it online.